right, we are now joined by the former champion of the world, Chris Weidman. Chris, let me get right to the point. Can you beat Israel Adesanya? Absolutely. I think that's a, uh, that's a matchup, like a tailor-made matchup for me. You know, um, those athletic strikers, um, tall, lanky guys, I've, I've proven that I could beat, you know, I think pressure, wrestling, heavy punches and kicks, you know, just, just nonstop pressure is what, what you need to beat them. That's the recipe that beats those guys. And I proved that with Anderson Silva twice, Uriah Hole, another one. Um, you know, I just, uh, those guys are, those guys are in trouble against me. It does seem to me, and the reason I the reason I asked you to come on, the reason I asked you so directly, I guess I should share with you in case you think I just blindsided you, but I was just talking to the audience. And I do maintain, I do maintain stylistically the biggest problem for Adesanya is Chris Weidman, but we are left with a question of will Chris be given the opportunity? And it looks as though Adesanya has directed his attention towards Cannoneer. I respect that, and I got no problem with it. But Chris Cannonier has his hands full with Robert Whitaker, who the odds makers believe he can't beat. So it just seemed as though a bizarre call out. Meanwhile, we have a sitting former world champion, you, in the division that doesn't have a dance partner, and that's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, listen, I would take that fight tomorrow. That fight is, uh, you know, I, honestly, I don't even care about a belt at this point anymore. Other than bringing a belt back to the U.S., you know, seeing that they had a they had a graphic up the uh, the other night and they showed where all the champions were from, and you literally have one champion from the U.S. now, and seeing that definitely was something that lit a little fire in my ass and was like, man, I got I got to get a belt and bring it back. But other than that, it's not about getting the belt for me anymore. It's about finding these guys to really uh, challenge myself, and and I love going against guys that everyone thinks I can't beat. And Adesanya is definitely that guy right now where. I know I can beat him. Um, I don't know if I need more fights to fight him. If I do, that's fine. But I won't, I would, that's, that's the fight that I would love to get in there. I know I can prove people wrong. Um, and I would, uh, I would go out there and I would finish him. And Chris, it seems like we're in, we're in a, what I'm calling contender season right now, right? You had the, these two great middleweights, and everybody in the division stood back very respectfully and said, look, you guys are undefeated. You've got business. Go settle it. But nobody's clearly stepped forward as the next guy, except for you. You were the only guy who I have heard say I want to fight Adesanya. With all due respect, even to Jared Cannonier, I have not heard him say that. In fact, it would even be inappropriate because he's already fighting Whitaker. So we end up in this situation of, if not you, then who? And if I'm a fan, and I am, and I'm sitting over here, and this is a volunteer army, and only one guy is volunteering, you, what am I missing? I I'm with you, man. Um... I think that's an exciting fight to make. If you look up and down the rankings, I don't think there's too many other fights that are going to excite people the way our narrative could, could work um, and what I bring to the table. And, and you know, it's not, it's not any bullshit. It's just facts. No, I mean, you, if, you actually, if you're into MMA and you really understand the game, you look at my game, you know I present some serious, serious trouble for Adesanya. And more than anybody's ever had in the past, he hasn't really fought any really great accoladed wrestlers other than Yo Romero who doesn't use his wrestling. So I don't even, I don't even, I don't even count that. Um, I'm the type of guy that will bring that pressure and I'll take him down and I'll rag down him on the floor. And it, it was the same thing when I was fighting Anson Silva, you know, I did some great things coming up and to fight Anson Silva, but everyone knew just matchup wise, I was a problem for him, you know, just like you were a problem for him. And I think, um, I think people are people, you know, if you actually think honestly about the matchup, it's, it's a, it is, it's a problem for him. <laughs> sure. No, I, I, I can see that. I don't know that he would disagree. And um, I think we're two guys that respect Adesanya. I'm just sharing. We both follow the sport. I, I, I do agree that you've got a history there. He's got a history. His fight with Paulo Costa. Were you surprised in any way with either athlete? Some people are saying that Paulo uh, didn't pull the trigger. I think even Dana White said, I thought I'd see a little bit more pressure from him. Adesanya did a good job with range. What, what was your takeaway? You know, I, first, I, obviously, you got to compliment the champ, Adesanya, you know, getting the win and destroying Kosa. But um, to be honest, when I was watching that fight and it comes off, it seemed like I'm hating. But it wasn't so much of what Adesanya was doing in my eyes. It was the lack of what Kosa was doing. I mean, he froze. We all expected him to move forward and throw big punches, get on the inside, and just manhandle him on the inside and look to knock him out. And he wasn't able to do that. He, 
he froze at the range, the kicking range, and um, he wasn't able to break through that barrier. And I and I think maybe uh, some of the fights that Adesanya has had in the past, like Whitaker, where you've seen him throwing kind of wild, and Adesanya was able to capitalize and knock him out. I think highlights like that were may, maybe have got it to Costa's head, and he was worried about really exposing himself and putting himself in danger, but. This is the fight game. You got to go. You got to go in. You got to give it your all. And he's going to, he, that's definitely one of those fights that he's going to be looking back at and being super disappointed with himself. You know, he didn't give his all at all. You know, he stood there and just got picked apart. And so, that, I mean, that being said, all the credit goes to Adesanya. Um, but Costa definitely didn't give his best in the octagon. And it just sucks. I, I want to see a good fight. I want to see both guys tested. And uh, the fact that we didn't get to see that pisses me off. But whatever, what are you going to do? It was almost like it was almost it was almost like Costa had a bad right hand, like he had a hurt right hand going to that fight. That, I don't know if he threw one right hand. There, a couple of times he actually let go of his hands. It was like he finished with that left hook, and he was super close in with it, completely out of range. Yeah, so it was just a very it was a very weird fight. All right, let me, let me switch gears. Uh, give me some gossip real fast. So your brother in law Wonder Boy, to my understanding, has called out Leon Edwards. Yeah. Any progress on that fight? <laughs> yes. December 12th, Leon Edwards won the boy. We broke the news here. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You could. Is, is it out I'm there? Pulling I didn't it, hear. I'm pulling it. Fact, I even read last night. I even the read facts, last night at like midnight. Matter. Yeah, that they were talking Wonder Boy versus Chamaya, but Wonder Boy was going, well, actually, I, I have other plans. But apparently, that news is out. Now I know. All right. I guess the world knows. Now I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know now. Cool. You no, know, we broke the news. All right, cool. <laughs> hey, Whiteman, great yeah. talking to you, buddy. I hope you get that fight. That fight like makes a lot of sense to me, and I, I I appreciate the mere fact that you're the one asking for it. I mean, ultimately, I don't see anybody else doing that. Good for you, pal. I appreciate it, man. Shell, you're the best, and best of luck with everything. Cool. Take care, Chris. All right, guys, Chris Whiteman. Now, I do have to rework this just a little bit for you because I had a conversation with Errol Hawani. And Brett Akimoto, we were on ESPN, and it was right after Adesanya, Paulo Costa's fight. And we went around the table, just the three of us there visiting, and um, the question was, who should fight Izzy next? Now, I do think that we will all conclude who is going to fight Izzy next, which is going to be Cannoneer. It generally works. Who Izzy calls for, Izzy gets. History has to matter. Izzy is now called for Cannoneer, but it's not quite the same. Cannoneer has a date with Robert Whitaker, who's a tough night out. We can both we can all agree. And the odds maker believe Cannoneer is not going to win. I'm not asking for popular opinion on this. I'm asking if we're going to set a calendar, sign some contracts, and get Adesanya a next fight in a meaningful period of time. Do we wait until Cannoneer fights Whitaker? Or do we find him something else to do? Those are the only two options. You have no other options. And one thing that Ariel, Brett, and I did conclude at the end of our argument, and we were all we were all kind of far out there. Right? I mean, Brett was saying, well, let's see what happens in the Cannoneer fight. Maybe if not Cannoneer, maybe a rematch with Whitaker. I don't know if the UFC wants to do it. He wasn't big and strong on his argument. Ariel comes in and says, well, you know, I really think Jack the Joker needs to be looked at. But Ariel wasn't big and strong on his argument. I said, well, you know, I could see a scenario where Uriah Hall does so well with Anderson Silva that he gets the push. But I wasn't big and strong on my argument. Point being, the three of us who ESPN deemed good enough to be having the discussion came to one conclusion, which is we don't have a number one contender. The only thing that you could take away if you were an audience member of Brett Errol and I having this debate is that we don't have a number one contender. I don't know that one option seems better than another option right now. That's just a reality, in my opinion. I do not know that if you argue Chemayev should step in on the mere fact that he's undefeated, that that argument would be any better or more laughed at than any other suggestion. It's just very open season right now. Now, the overarching point of all of this is that somebody has a chance to step forward. Somebody has a chance to say, I am the guy, and here is my points as to why. 
I thought Weidman was very respectful. I thought that Weidman could have said, look, we have two common opponents. Kelvin Gaslam, Anderson Silva, I stopped them both. You squeaked to buy them both. I thought he was being very nice by just simply saying, I'd like to do this for America. I'd like the shot. I've got the skills to beat you. But that's how Weidman talks. Weidman is just a nice guy. I feel like there's a stronger argument there to be made. Now, this will ultimately be up to Dana White, but don't think for a moment that you all don't get a say in this. And you don't have to go with me. I, th I think that it is Weidman. I think for many reasons. I think the calendar matches up. I think that's a stylistic, interesting match. One that Adesanya could close the book. Not only to beat the guys of today, I beat the guys from yesterday. That's just hard to do. That's one of the things that George St. Pierre has, which is why George St. Pierre wins the argument every time it's made about the greatest of all time. Just matchup-wise, he was able to beat all the guys of yesterday, all the guys of his day, and he was able to beat the future before he saw his way out the door. It seems as something that Adesanya would want. We now know that it's something Chris Weidman wants, but I'm here to ask you guys, what do you want?